Alright, so we're going to do an, an Excel modeling of the transportation problem as an LP and interestingly enough you will find that it is actually much easier to go from the problem description which I put on the right there. So we'll kind of just jump straight into it. So we'll put the variables right at the top and what we're going to do, we're going to do things a bit differently. So just for reference, this is the same transportation, this is the same simplified balance transportation problem as in that other video. So hopefully you kind of just remember the concept. So now, what I'm going to do first is that we're going to set up the variables and remember that um, I mentioned the variables being like a grid, kind of like matching along with this table. So what we're going to do is that we're going to do storage facility 1 and then we're going to do storage facility 2. Uh, I would just, just lazily change that manually and then we'll just, we'll just do that and then dam 1, dam 2, dam 3. And I'll just move this over just to make sure it's in line. And then we're gonna, and these, these are where our variable is gonna be. So this is gonna be x11, x12, x13, x21, x22, x23. And like before, and like before, we're just gonna set zero for all of them. So I'm just copy pasting that to all the, oh, sorry, that's a bit much. Just copy pasting that to all the cells. And the other, th um, I won't set those up yet, but we will we'll come back to that later. So I'm actually leaving an extra line for a reason. So now parameters. So I mentioned before that this transportation problem has is the first one where we have parameters where we're going to actually have numbers that we're going to need to put in. So I'm going to copy this over and we're just going to enter the data from this table into this as well. So it's going to be 75, oh, that goes down 20, 40, and then 85. I'm just using the numpad. In, 75. All right. Now, remember that each storage facility has a supply and each dam has a demand. And what you see in the tra and you'll notice that I did the same thing back in the in back in the handwritten version of the video. So, and now we just want to be able to just take the numbers so the storage can have, have to 400, storage facility 1 can have 400, facility 2 can have 500. And then the demand will have 300 for dam 1, 200 for dam 2, 400 for dam 3. And that's what we're going to work with. So remember, remember that when the remember that when when we solve the problem, it's going to indicate how many storage facilities going to go to dam one. Storage facility goes to dam two, and then um, actually no, I'm kind of doing this in reverse order. So let's do this as the objective function first. So that's the objective function. Now um, the Excel formula we want to use here is the sum product. And sorry, I was I will go back one step. Remember the objective function is that we want to sum up basically every every in this case megaliters of water travel along each of these distance. So effectively, it's going to be uh, this variable times this variable, and then plus this variable times this variable plus this variable times this variable plus this variable times this variable, and so on for the rest of the table. So the easy, so the quick and easy way to do it in Excel is that we've got a nice little function called sum product, and and if you see the little tooltip, it says return the sums of the product of the corresponding ranges or array. So and then so basically it means that we can put in array one, uh, put a comma, and then array two. And it it will it will do things in the way we expect. So that's our objective function. Now we want to set up our constraints. So remember that the our remember that we have supply and demand constraints. So the the amount put out by the storage facility cannot be greater than the supply, and the amount received by each of the dams has to be greater than the demand. So but we have to do this with respect to the decision variables. So what we're going to do is that we're going to add another calculating row to our variables. And what we're going to do is that we, we actually, so what we're going to do here, we're going to do uh, equal sum as a formula. And then you can highlight these cells or you could type in the cell reference and you can press enter. So, so basically what, and then uh, like before in the other one, you can click and drag the small box in the bottom right and that will transfer the formula over to the relevant set of cells. So if you think about it, that this number is effectively going to represent the total amount of water from storage facility one. And then this is going to re represent the total amount of water from storage facility two. So similarly for the demand, so this would be the demand, of the, the amount of water that dam one receives. So in a in similar way, I'm just going to do, this, do, do the sum and then going to do this. Normally I would type here out, but um, 
normally I would type it out because but because I'm used to typing things out, but it's uh, it's obviously a bit more user friendly to kind of just click and drag and to do things like that. All right, now that we've got that, now that we've got, this is actually all the setup we need to do. So now what we're gonna do is that we're gonna go to data, go to solver, and then once again, we wanna minimize, the, we wanna minimize. So once again, we're gonna click that objective function, and then just, just to make sure that it's actually clicking the right one, that, so that's B12. And then we wanna minimize, we wanna change the variable cells, and then we wanna highlight these variables, like I said before. And then we got to add our constraints. So I'll just quickly change that LP and then we're going to add the constraints. So let's do the supply constraints first. So the cell reference in this case, this will be the, the sum of the variable with the supply. And we know that it's got, um, we cannot exceed the supply. So this could be less than or equal to. So, and then the constraint in this case would be for, for this one specifically, it's going to be less than 400. So we're going to add that. And then the next one, so cell reference for this one. So the amount of water coming out of storage facility two has to be less than or equal to 500. Now we're going to do the demand constraints. So for dam one, so dam one, the amount received must be greater than or equal to 300. And, and then for dam two, greater than or equal to 200. And dam three, greater than or equal to 400. And then add. And then we can click OK and sorry, we can click cancel because that's all the constraints we need to deal with. Making sure they're non-negative, making sure the solver is on simplex LP. We should be able to click solve and our numbers will change. So it says that the solver found a solution or constraints and optimality conditions are satisfied. I'll leave this one up in the Excel worksheet that if I remember, I'll put a link in the description below and um, then you should be able to replicate this for yourself. So. We will look at the, the set, we will look at the sensitivity and we'll we'll look at some slack and sensitivity in, in the, the next video just to get an idea of how or what more information we can interpret from this scenario. So until then.